a question we get asked a lot is why the 232 telephones don't ring by themselves. And what you're looking at in the picture now is, is what's known as the 232 instrument. So that's the actual telephone. But the actual bell set uh, lived separately in what's known as a bell set 26. This was in an age just after the candlestick telephones where it was still a thought to be a good idea to have the bell set separate to the actual instrument itself. So very often the instrument would be sat on a, a table or a desk and the actual bell set would be fastened usually to, to the wall and you'd have a cable connecting the two together, usually a braided cable very similar to the, to the handset cord, again going into the back of the telephone. So that was a very common thing back in the day because it was at an age where they'd not thought to put the bells internal to the actual telephone. In fact it wasn't until the 300 series telephones, which you can see at the other end of the workshop, that they actually thought to actually contain the bell within the first telephone. So I say back in the, in the days of the 200 series, it was typical to have the instrument with no bells inside at all, as you can see, it's too small to actually have a bell inside, but to have the bell set separately. And then that plugged into the, well actually hardwired into the wall, but in modern parlance plugged in. But the option that was there was to actually combine the two together in what was known as a combined set. So you can see here a combined set, which is basically the instrument's top, at the very top, the pyramid shape, and then the actual drawer at the bottom with the bell set 26 between the two. So you can see the bell set 6 there, 26 there, and the instrument. And it's just literally sandwiched between the two with special bolts or reversing uh, screws, as they're sometimes called. And that is in a configuration called the combined set. Still very lovely, and very often collectors prefer that because it sits in a smaller footprint on the desk. But again, it's down to personal choice. Some people still prefer them as they were with the instrument separate to the actual bell set. And that's, that's a question we get asked a lot. So if you find an instrument such as this and you want it to ring, you really need the associated bell set, which are very often harder to find than the actual instruments because what tended to happen is when people moved the house, you know, although uh, they were supposed to return them back to the GPO, very often the instrument would be lifted up, they would cut the cable take the instrument thinking they got the telephone but leave the bell set fastened to the skirting board and of course they then got over time got lost so you'll see far more instruments such as this than you will bell sets or combined sets so the problem now is that people tend to use any bell to actually make them ring so you can use the instrument with something a more modern bell like a bell set 64d or more in character, you could use a wooden bell box 1A. But ideally, from a collector's point of view, you really want the bell set 26 and the 232. As I say, it wasn't until a little bit later on that the next generation, the 300 series telephones, actually contained the bell within the housing. Hope that makes sense.